everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about the cause of eating disorder. So hopefully uh, in the article you should have read um, from the Department of Psychology in 2002 about what eating disorders are and um, maybe the pathology and uh, a little bit more background about them. So eating disorders may present represent a way of coping with a problem of identity and personal control. Um, in the late 1960s, uh, the previously obscure and extremely rare disorder, anorexia nervosa, AN, became much more prevalent in Western societies. Young females from middle and upper class families were starving themselves sometimes to death. The next decade uh, saw the emergence of a new eating disorder, bulimia, which wherein young women alternated self-starvation with binging, usually followed by purging, so active attempts to rid the body of calories. So research on these new disorders grew about the same rate as the disorders themselves. Some interesting historical research uncovered evidence of both AN and BN having existed since ancient times, but certainly not to the same extent and possibly not in the same way as at the present. Uh, by the turn of the millennium, anorexia and bulimia were well established as was the research enterprise, but a clear understanding of the source of the disorder or how to prevent uh, or treat them remained elusive. So the diagnostic criteria and core pathological features of eating disorders. The core symptoms, some examples are body dissatisfaction, preoccupation with food, weight, and shape. Certain ego deficits uh, do not necessarily distinguish AN from BN patients, even if the diagnostic criteria for the two EDs differ. Okay. The diagnostic criteria for AN are maintaining a body weight at a level less than 85% of a normal weight for age and height, an intense fear of fatness, disturbed experience of one's body weight or shape, and amenorrhea for at least three consecutive menstrual cycles. Although many AN patients engage in compulsive eating restrictors, type AN patients are distinguished by their resolute refusal to eat much where bulimic type AN patients regularly engage in binge eating and purging. So basically the opposite. One is controlling, one is uh, unable to control their urge. The BSM uh, four criteria for BN included recurrent episodes for both binge eating, i.e. eating a larger amount of food than most people would eat in a similar time and circumstance, and a feeling of lack of control of one's eating during the episode. And com compensatory behaviors such as purging, exercising, or fasting to prevent weight gain from the overeating. So kind of equaling it out by either exercising a lot, fasting, or purging. These behaviors must occur at least twice a week for a minimum of three months for it to be considered a diagnosis. In addition, self-evaluation is overly dependent on body weight and shape. Note that binging and purging are characteristics of one major type of anorexia, which leads to understandable confusion between anorexia and bulimia. Bulimia may never, may differ from bulimic type anorexia only in that bulimic patients are unable to suppress their weight below the 85% cutoff and thus fail to display amenorrhea. Uh, anorexia is an exclusionary criterion for bulimia, which otherwise might be confused with bulimic type anorexia. A further subdivision of bulimia into purging type, i.e. use of self-induced vomiting or a laxative diuretic or amnia abuse, and non-purging type, i.e. fasting, exercising, or other non-purging means of compensating for binge eating, would seem to differ only in the preferred tactic for eliminating calories and probably has little conceptual significance. Although binging is a diagnostic feature of uh, bulimia and bulimic type anorexia, we have little guidance as how to identify a binge. Exactly how much food is a larger than normal amount of food? How are we to assess the loss of control that allegedly characterizes Binges, if an eating episode displayed only one aspect of a huge amount of food or loss of control, but not both, would it still be a binge? Impulsivity, so sexual promiscuity, suicide attempts, drug abuse, and stealing or shoplifting are frequently noted in bulimic patients. Impulsiveness may be what makes an aspiring anorexic into a bulimic if an individual intent on restricting her intake cannot resist food under certain circumstances, she may captivate to temptation, binge, and then feel obliged to compensate afterward. So incidence and prevalence. 
The incidence of anorexia and bulimia has increased markedly during the past 50 years, although there is some reason to believe that at least some of the increase is due to greater awareness and reporting of these disorders. Prevalence estimates tend to range from 3 to 10 percent of at-risk females, those between 5 and 29 years of age, with bulimic patients outnumbering anorexia patients by at least 2 to 1. Those with an anorexic frequently deny any uh, illness and are often seen for treatment only because of the concern of those close to them and their lives may be indeed. Okay, found, uh, Gleed found that restrictor type anorexia is more distinct from bulimic anorexia than bulimic anorexia is from bulimia. It has ar been argued that bulimic type anorexia should simply be considered bulimia. Those with bulimia because of their appearance is nor usually normal and their binging and purging in private are usually more difficult to detect. Although bulimia patients are more likely to present themselves for treatment because the binge purge cycle is often profoundly disturbing to them. EDs or eating disorders are more than 10 times more prevalent in females than in males and the age range from 12 to 25 is 95% of the cases. The prognosis, there's no easy treatment for eating disorders. About a third of patients continue to meet diagnostic criteria five years and longer after initial treatment. Estimates of mortality, including suicide rates, just from over five to eight percent. Still, more than 50 percent of patients show significant improvement more than five years after beginning treatment. There has been little investigation into natural recovery, self-care, or remission of EDs without treatment, so you must get treatment. Cause of eating disorders, so eating disorders do not occur uniformly in all cultures at all times. An obsession with slimness, a core feature of eating disorders is concentrated in cultures in which food is abundant. In cultures of scarcity, the ideal body shape is much more likely to be rotund, suggesting that ideals tend to toward what is difficult to achieve. A culture of caloric abundance may be considered a cause of eating disorders. Media, not surprisingly, the media are often blamed for the increasingly incidence of eating disorders on the grounds that media images of idealized slim physiques motivate or even force people to attempt to achieve slimness themselves. The media are accused of distorting reality in that the models and celebrities portrayed in the media are either naturally thin, i.e. at the tail of the normal distribution of the body weight and thus unrepresentative of normality or unnaturally thin. The byproducts, the products of exceptional exertions to achieve and maintain a slim physique. So as with the cultural abundance, idealized media images are at best a background cause of eating disorders. Exposure to the media is so widespread that if such exposure were the cause of eating disorders, then it would be difficult to explain why anyone would not be eating disordered. Okay, so is, is it really the media? Although it is tempting to conclude that watching a large dose of thin idealized images on television leads to dissatisfaction with one's body, a correlation cannot determine causality. An alternative scenario, for example, might be that those most dissatisfied with their bodies or wishing to be thinner seek out are more seek out or are more interested in particular types of television. So there's bias dissatisfaction. Uh, bias dissatisfaction, in fact, may be regarded as an essential precursor and continuing a component of eating disorders. The dissatisfaction often has emotional overtones of self-disgust. The societal disparagement of overweight and glorification of underweight may perhaps most young women express dissatisfaction with their weight and shape. The more intense with this, the more intense this dissatisfaction, the more likely that one will undertake attempts to lose weight. Peer pressure, like the media, peer influence is often cited as a contributor to eating disorders. Adolescents, girls learn certain attitudes like the importance of slimness and behaviors such as dieting and purging from their peers. Adolescent female friendship cliques tend to be homogeneous with respect to the body image concerns suggesting direct peer influence. However, the possibility remains that cliques do not influence their members so much as recruit them on the basis of shared concerns. Some evidence suggests that peers and families are more potent influence than the media. Family pressure. Families and friends often praise anorexia patients' slenderness and they and envy the self-control and discipline required to achieve it. This reinforcement frequently persists even when the anorexia becomes severely emancipated. emancipated. This reinforcement does not cause the disorder so much as to help perpetuate it. Those with anorexia as often as not use their families increasingly 
concerns about their inordinateness as a manipulative tool. Case reports and studies of family interaction show eating disorders families to be enmeshed, intrusive, hostile, and negating of the patient's emotional needs. Minukin argued that the entire family unit must be treated if therapy is to be effective. Furthermore, eating disorder patients generally describe a critical family environment featuring cohesive parental control. Adolescents who perceive family communication, parental caring, and parental expectations as low as those who report sexual or physical abuse are at increased risk for developing eating disorders. Bulimic patients also report greater parental intrusiveness, specifically maternal invasion of privacy, jealousy, and competition, as well as paternal sedu seductiveness. In contrast, perceived parental encouragement of autonomy is associated with less dieting behavior possibly serving a protection function against eating disorders. Mothers of girls with eating disorders may well have an influence on their daughter's pathology. Mothers of eating disorder patients are more dissatisfied with, gen with the general functioning of the family system and are, are themselves more eating disordered than are mothers of girls who do not have eating disorders. So direct maternal comments appear to be more powerful influences than is simple modeling of weight and shape concerns. Mothers who themselves have an eating disorder tend to have a negative influence on their children's attitudes and behaviors, feeding them irregularly, using food for the non-nutritive purposes, and expressing concern about their daughter's weight as early as the age of two. By the five years of age, these children exhibit greater negative effect than do the offspring of mothers without eating disorders and are at serious risk for the later development of an eating disorder. Maternal eating disorders produce childhood feeding problems in offspring, and 50% of children and mothers with eating disorders have psychiatric disorders. Individual risk factors. So eating disorder patients report more premorbid life stresses and difficulties than do controls. Eating disorders serve as a desperate attempt to regulate overwhelming negative effect and to construct a coherent sense of self when internal structures are lacking. An anorexic patient achieves at least partial emotional gratification by avoiding food and achieving slimness. The BM patient gains emotional relief by binging. And stress and negative mood are commonly reported antidotes for eating disorders. Bulimia patients have elevated self-directed hostility, probably because they feel bad for purging or they feel bad for um, uh, binging. And purging eventually replaces binging as a means of tension reduction, so you feel better about yourself. Um, women with ED scores higher than controls and guilt, covert hostility, and suppress anger. Eating disorder symptoms and dietary restraint pre predicted subsequent depression in initially non-depressed individuals. Low self-esteem may conduce to a variety of disorders, including uh, eating disorders, and individuals with eating disorders tend to spend an inordinate amount of time assessing about food, eating, weight, shape, and related matters. Conge uh, cognitive factors, so perfectionism is not a defining characteristic of eating disorders, but it has long been thought to be involved in anorexic and to a lesser extent bulimic. The bulimic immersion in the binge may protect the individual from emotional stress. Uh, eating disorder patients display evidence of abnormal cognitive style or information processing and, and eating disorder patients display aberrations in information processing and memory, especially for maternal related to weight, shape, and food. Biological factors, eating disorders aggregate in families, but such studies cannot easily disentangle genetic from environmental transmission. Almost everyone sees an anorexic as principally attributable to the relentless pursuit of thinness that detects restrictive food intake, which leads directly to anorexia. Recovered bulimics show persistent abnormalities related to serotonin function, suggesting that such abnormalities may underlie the development of bulimia. Just as an addict craves a drug, bulimics are postulated to experience intense food cravings, which may be due to exaggerated cephalic phase response to food cues and or stress, which has been associated with overeating in the past. So that's the presentation on eating disorders. Uh, take a couple uh, topics from uh, what you learned and summarize those topics, evaluate those topics. How will you also apply these in the future?